From kidnapping and assaulting adult stars to literally taking the heart out of aspiring opponent, these are UFC fighters who are in jail for life. And starting off back in 2006, this UFC fighter found himself as the mastermind behind the largest bank heist in the history of the UK. So he, he robbed the bank and yes. was fighting in the UFC. He was fighting in the UFC while he was a full-on criminal. <laughs> Lightning Lee Murray was an MMA fighter who made his UFC debut back in January 2004 where he faced Jorge Rivera in UFC 46. And this was a fight to remember because Murray came out wearing a Silence of the Lambs horror mask and a jumpsuit to match his look. Murray dominated the fight, ending Rivera in round one by submission. But this would be the new crazy fighter of the UFC's first and last appearance. Because Murray would struggle to maintain a US visa due to his criminal history of assault and he also ended out almost losing his life to a stabbing in the heart during a brawl just a year later. In fact, the stabbing was so bad that he had to be revived four times whilst nurses injected him with several bags of blood to replace what he had lost. Murray even described how it went down and said, I knew I'd been stabbed in the heart by the blood gushing out of me. Blood sprayed from me about a meter away. I laid down on the back seat, blood splashed all the way to the roof. Days after <laughs> Lee Murray got stabbed, he's walking around the event with all the stitches still in them and everything still fresh. So if the dark side of Murray wasn't clear enough already, it was about to be. Because just two years later after his debut in the UFC, Lee Murray was about to partake in the second largest bank heist in the world and he almost got away with it. It all happened back on February 21, 2006, where seven masked bandits kidnapped Colin Dixon, the manager of the Securitas Cash Depot in Tonebridge, England. One of the bandits had followed behind Colin after he was heading home from work and pulled him over disguised as a fake police officer, where he then held Colin at gunpoint and kidnapped him. The bandits then also lured both the wife and son of Colin out from their house before kidnapping them as well. The group proceeded to blackmail Colin into cooperating with their plan and that in return, he and his family would not be hurt. They then used Colin to enter the Securitas Cash Depot where the bandits held all of the 14 present employees at gunpoint before gaining access to the cash vaults inside. After spending over an hour stuffing money into their escape van, the bandits managed to walk away with around 53 million pounds equivalent to 64 million US dollars. And despite the insane amount of money they had just stolen, another 154 million pounds was left behind because they literally had no room left in their van to fit any more. Anyway, police eventually caught up all of the members over the next few years. However, Murray was the last of the crew to be caught and it wasn't until June 2010 where he was finally found and arrested in Morocco where he was enjoying his new secret multi-million dollar lifestyle. Murray was sentenced to 25 years behind bars so he won't be out anytime soon. And this next fighter had not only one of the most controversial UFC fights ever, but also was a criminal guilty of a disgusting crime at the time and walked free for years before getting caught. Joe Sun, who fought at UFC 4 back in 1994, was one of the first ever fighters for the UFC. And let's just say his first fight was pretty messed up. He faced Keith Hackney and managed to get Hackney in a chokehold before this happened. Keith continued punching Sun in the groin over and over before he eventually managed to submit him. But what's more messed up than this move is that Sun had committed a disgusting crime just four years before and was fighting as a guilty man who was yet to be found. Because in 1990, a woman was abducted and physically and sexually assaulted by Sun and his accomplice before being dumped on the street and told by Sun that it's Christmas, this is your lucky day. It wasn't until 2008, almost 20 years later, that police were able to find Sun and his accomplice guilty of the crime after DNA evidence obtained from the crime scene was matched to Sun. Sun's DNA was was actually obtained through a plea agreement related to other crimes that he had committed and showed up as a match for this disturbing crime that was unsolved from years before. First in the carport, two days camera in the carport, they grabbed him, they were wearing a car, the driver was from a distance away. So that's bad. Wrong guy. But what's most messed up about this situation is that due to the length of time since the crime was committed, Sun, who would have faced a maximum of 275 years if convicted, could no longer be charged for all of the crimes due to the statute of limitations, so was only found guilty of one felony count of torture and was sentenced to seven years to life behind bars. However, after being finally charged and sent to jail in 2011, he ended up beating and taking the life of his cellmate just a few months later and was sentenced to an extra 
27 years behind bars for manslaughter. Now, some will face the rest of his years behind bars. And this next fighter almost killed an adult star after he caught her with a new man. Jonathan War Machine Copenhaver was a UFC fighter who made his first UFC appearance back in 2007, where he faced Jared Rollins on the Ultimate Fighter 6 finale. The fight earned the Fight of the Night honors, and War Machine ended Rollins by KO in the third round. John, I know I've said it before, but... Oh, However, War Machine's UFC career would be short-lived, and his second and last UFC fight went down shortly later in UFC 84, to which he lost to Yoshiyuki Yoshida by submission. War Machine would fail to resign with the UFC after both rejecting a fight offer and making controversial statements on his MySpace page, speaking about the death of a fellow UFC fighter, Evan Tanner. So anyway, War Machine ended out signing to Bellator shortly afterwards before once again he was released from the organization just a few years later. Later, but this time, the reasons were much darker. All right, thanks, Masa. Now we have a breaking news update. War Machine was sentenced today to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 36 years. On August 8, 2014, War Machine intruded on his ex-girlfriend, Christy McKinney's home, to which he found her with her new boyfriend, Corey Thomas. He then assaulted Corey and bit a part of his cheek out, forcing him to keep quiet to the authorities. After assaulting Corey, he then physically and sexually assaulted Christy, leaving her with 18 broken broken bones in her face, 12 missing teeth, a knife stab wound, 3 rib fractures and a severely ruptured liver. War Machine allegedly told Christy, that's it, I've got to kill you. However, she was fortunate enough to escape and he then went on the run. And whilst avoiding police, War Machine posted some tweets directed to Christy stating, I love you and hope you're okay. I came home early to surprise you and help you set up for your convention. I can't believe what I found and can't believe what happened. All I wanted was to surprise you and help and do something nice. Now this, I'm so heartbroken in all ways. I will always love you. However, a week later, War Machine was caught and was charged with 36 different felonies, including kidnapping, physical and sexual assault of his ex-girlfriend, and the attempted murder of both Christy and Corey. And during the trial, War Machine was even laughing after hearing his ex-girlfriend describe how he beat her. Judge, I just like the record to notate that Mr. Copenhagen is laughing and shaking his head. I heard it. Objection. Anyway, War Machine was found guilty on 29 of the 36 felony counts and was sentenced to life in prison. And what this next fighter did was not only enough to send him to life behind bars, but it truly was one of the most disturbing crimes ever committed. This fighter was not in the UFC, however his story is definitely something like never before. Jared Wyatt was an MMA professional who had his first and only professional MMA fight in 2010, to which he won by TKO in the first round. However, 2010 would be the start start and end of Wyatt's professional MMA career because he was about to commit an act that is truly disturbing so please be warned. Wyatt was at home with his 21 year old sparring partner Taylor Powell where the two were drinking hallucinogenic mushroom tea. Wyatt claimed that the tea made him think that Powell was actually Satan and that his instructions from God were to kill the devil in him so Wyatt proceeded to take Powell's life before removing both his heart and tongue. The police found Wyatt shortly after at the apartment where he instantly Instantly admitted that he took Powell's life and told the police that he was trying to stop the devil. Wyatt pled not guilty in court due to reason of insanity and agreed to a plea deal where he will serve 50 years to life in prison. And this next fighter fought a trilogy against one of the most well-known UFC fighters of all time before committing a disturbing act that would have him spending the rest of his life in prison. Jeremy Jackson was a UFC fighter who had his UFC debut back in September 2003 at UFC 44. He faced one of UFC's most respected names to date, Nick Diaz, in which would be their trilogy fight, currently being 1-1 one one in previous fights. Jackson lost the fight to submission and would go on to make him one more appearance in the UFC on the Ultimate Fighter 4, to which he also lost by submission. Jackson failed to re-sign to the UFC, and two years later, he did something that would have him spending the rest of his life behind bars. Because on June 2008, Jackson was on trial for allegedly breaking into his ex-girlfriend's home, where he held a BB gun to her head and sexually assaulted her. During the trial, Jackson's lawyer said that he had just broken down as a result of the trial and decided to plead guilty. Jackson was therefore found guilty of multiple charges and sentenced to 25 years to life behind bars. And those are the worst criminals in the UFC. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out these weird things you didn't know about John Jones.